Bardin, welcome to another episode of This Is Sevens. Today, we're gonna to be covering the basics of rugby nutrition. Everything from how to put on lead mass and how to stick to a meal plan. So let's get into it. But they've got the stepping of this man, Luke Trahan. He's such a special player, Trahan. The determination of Luke Trahan to get Wales on the board. Trahan has got serious pace into the 22. And the doctor is in the house. So nutrition can be a confusing topic to dive into. There's lots of information out there, but sometimes it's hard to know what's genuine and what's misleading, particularly on social media. The following is the information we are taught and try to stick to as pros within the Welsh setup. Obviously I play sevens, but a lot of this information will be useful to most rugby players. Normally in rugby, we're trying to increase our muscle mass, minimize fat gain, but still maintain a healthy immune system so we can keep on playing throughout the season. Obviously, what we eat and drink play a vital role in this. Sevens has a big emphasis around fitness, but this doesn't mean you have to be small. There's some big rigs running around on the World Series. Sevens large produces efficient physical athletes. This is because whatever weight you are, you need to carry it around for six games on the weekend, playing rugby that's at a higher intensity or meters per minute than 15s. Put simply, rugby is a collision sport and force is mass times acceleration. More force roughly translates to more power, which could mean better speed and agility when you're on the pitch. It's not the be all and end all though. If you weigh 120 kilograms, can't run around, can't catch or pass, you're gonna be pretty useless on a rugby pitch, which is why we want to minimize fat gain, but maximize lean muscle. So when thinking about putting on weight, it's worth considering calories in versus calories out. Most diets are based around manipulating this formula to get the desired results. So it's always good having it in the back of your head. So if your calories in match your calories out, that's when you're gonna maintain your weight. If you're eating more than you're burning, that's when you're gonna put on weight. And if you're burning more than you're eating, that's when you're gonna lose weight. Macronutrients are the main things that we're given targets for. They are targets though, and you can find whatever variance works for you. So our daily targets are protein, 2.5 to 3 grams per kilogram of body weight, carbohydrates, 4 to 5 grams per kilogram of body weight, and fats, 1.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. So for myself, being 80 kilograms, each day I want to be getting 200 to 240 grams of protein, 300 to 400 grams of carbohydrate, and 96 grams of fats. This translates to roughly 3,264 calories. You can split it up any way you like. For example, if you need to fit it around school or work, but we're recommended to try and eat something every three hours. So what does this look like in a day? So breakfast normally at 7 a.m. This could be protein porridge and a slice of toast. After our gym session, maybe around 10 a.m., we'll have a protein shake and a banana. After our rugby session then, lunchtime at one o'clock, we'll have two turkey breast steaks and two wholemeal wraps with some salad. In the middle of the afternoon, you'd have a snack at 4 p.m. This could be a chicken breast and maybe a large sweet potato. 11 o'clock, this could be two salmon fillips. <laughs> Boop. Dinner at seven o'clock, this could be two salmon fillets, two cups of brown rice and some veg. And pre-bed on a training day, you could have some porridge with some mixed berries or potentially some yogurt. So make sure you're getting some form of veg or salad in at meal times. This is good for fiber and it's full of nutrients. Try and stay away from processed foods as they're not as nutritious and you can find good fats in things like fish and nuts. You would have seen earlier that we had different volumes for carbohydrates for a rest day compared to a training day. You need to fuel the work that you're doing. So when you're on a rest day, you don't want to overdo it with the carbohydrates when there's no work volume. Proteins and fats stay consistent on rest days and it's the carbohydrates that drop a little bit. This brings us on to our next point of how to stick to a meal plan. A rest day is a great chance to meal prep so that you don't have to worry about it after training when you're tired or busy. Realistically, it's tough to eat completely clean for a whole season, so don't beat yourself up too much and give yourself little breaks from time to time. I find it easiest to plan in six week blocks so you don't lose sight of the bigger goal. Planning your week is really useful when you're gonna train, when you're gonna eat. You can even plan in when you're gonna have a little treat on certain days. It will help stop you going overboard with the calories when you're tired and don't have anything planned to eat. It's completely normal and just a part of everyday life that you will have a few slip ups or the weekend where you go overboard, but it's important you don't lose track of the bigger goal. So using an app like MyFitnessPal is really useful. You can check whether you're getting close to hitting your macronutrients 
You can also scan barcodes on the food you're eating to get that information up nice and quickly. So you would have seen that we use protein shakes during our training days, so I'll quickly mention them. Firstly, what are protein powders? So whey and casein powders, they're derived from milk, and then soy protein obviously comes from soy. They aren't some super complex powder that's created in a lab that's gonna solve all of your weight gain goals. They're derived from milk, and on the whole, they're not very cheap either. So if you have a choice between real food and a protein shake, I'd go for the real food every time. It has more nutritional value as well as the protein content. There is a time and a place for a shake though. For us on a training day, it's an easy source of protein between a gym and a training session and it's easier on the stomach when you're running around. Likewise, if you have a busy work schedule, it could be a good option to top up your protein or carb intake for the day. Finally on protein shakes, if you are going to be competing in rugby, it's good practice to look for the Informed Sport logo so you can guarantee drug tested products. Two other factors that are worth considering are alcohol and sleep. Put simply, none of the effects of alcohol are beneficial for putting muscle mass on. If you can fit it around your goals, that's completely fine and just part of everyday life. Typically, if we're preparing for a World Series event, it could be a month or so of no alcohol just to maximize those fitness and training adaptations. One of the major effects of alcohol is that it disrupts your sleep and your body does a lot of its recovery and growth while you're counting sheep. We aim for a good seven hours of sleep to maximize its benefits. A good night's sleep will really help with your goal of putting on lean mass, but we can talk about sleep in another video. Hopefully you found that episode useful. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below. And as always, a like and subscribe will really help us grow the channel.